It's interesting to watch. I've been I've been reading the Financial Times, and interesting to watch the the pound, the British currency, is uh, falling. It's down to I believe yesterday it was at a dollar twenty four was the exchange rate. I remember back you know in the seventies, the eighties, the pound was over two dollars. Uh, in fact, I think it got as high as two twenty against the U.S. dollar. And, uh, you know, relative to the euro and to the U.S. dollar. But, but there's a, a realignment, a reorganization going on, as Theresa May, the prime minister, uh, conservative, has come out and said, this was a week or so ago, that, yes, we're going to do a hard disconnect from the European Union. Uh, in fact, she explicitly said, you're, you know, the United Kingdom is once again going to be a sovereign nation. So it seems to me that there's... As much as there's all this ferment going on in the United States right now in the in the debate between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton and Republicans and Democrats and and the advent of the Tea Party on the scene and Americans for Prosperity being you know functionally as big as the Republican Party kind of a shadow we've got a shadow political party in this country that is largely supporting Tea Party candidates that the subtext of much of this on both the progressive left and the uh, and the conservative right all the way out to the nutcase right is a repudiation of globalism which is what happened in the UK over the last few months and it's happening frankly I think all over the world and I don't have a uh, a prediction for you on where this is going to go or a consequence to this I, I am myself skeptical of globalism. Uh, part of my skepticism is informed by having lived in Germany for a year and, and having, you know, studied the history of the Third Reich and, and remembering, in fact, uh, Scott Berg and I were trying to write a book on the religion of the Third Reich, and we traveled around Germany for, for quite some time interviewing old Nazis going to the old Nazi sacred sites. There's this town called Wevelsburg, which is spelled with a W. It's pronounced with a V in German. That is, was the, basically the SS headquarters. And that town is still there. There's a, well, the last time I was there was in the nineties. Um, I assume it's still there. There was a house with skulls embedded in it around the, the door frame and, uh, you know, Nazi runic writing, uh, that I saw. Um, we, uh, you know, we accidentally walked in on a group of, you know, in a private room in a restaurant, in a, a restaurant slash hotel, into a group of uh, elderly Nazis with black candles holding some sort of Nazi ceremony. There's a castle there that was going to be the Vatican for the Nazis. And, and Hitler's shtick was, you know, one people, one nation, one leader, right? Ein Volk, ein, ein, Reich ein Führer. And there are people who hear echoes of that in Trump, you know, uh, you know, one nation, one leader, all this kind of stuff. But the, the overall, the overarching thing that Hitler was pitching, his, his main sales pitch to the German people was a thousand years of peace. The whole point of the German Reich was peace, world peace. We will have peace all around the world. And, and won't that be a wonderful thing? And so, you know, whenever, whenever any, quote, leader or politician starts talking about how they want to, you know, bring about world peace and, uh, you know, make it, like this is the you know the the, the one and only kind of thing. Um, I get a little skitzy, or a little concerned, shall we say, a little nervous. Skitzy is the wrong word. I, I or skittish, I guess, is where I was going with that. But you know, it just it concerns me that, and 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 and, and so you say, okay, let's have one world. Right? Let's let's have this one this globe at peace, one world. The question that you have to ask is, okay, uh, sounds fine. Who's in charge? Right? Who's who is in charge of this one world? Who's who's going to 
who's going to be deciding how that world is done? You know, how, how, how peace is maintained. How do you do that? John Kennedy, you know, talked about peace back in, in 1963 and, and talked about, you know, he said, you know, peace is, is one of the most important things on earth, right? And, and, and see, the, the metaphor that is being used to sell globalism and neoliberalism by and large is peace through trade. But what we're finding, I mean, you know, it might have worked just fine for, for Americans for a while, but what, what people are generally finding is that peace through trade isn't, isn't working, you know, as, as it never has. So, so anyhow, this is, this is John Kennedy just kind of introducing this top, this topic of peace. Here he is. I have therefore chosen this time and place to discuss a topic on which ignorance too often abounds and the truth too rarely perceived. And that is the most important topic on earth, peace. And then he goes on to say, this is not the kind of peace I'm talking about. What kind about of a peace do I mean and what kind of a peace do we seek? Not a Pax Americana enforced on the world by American weapons of war. Not the peace of the... Now, hang on, I have just, therefore whoop. chosen this time and place oh, rats. to discuss a topic. Of I'm sorry. <laughs> so he said, you know, not a Pax Americana, right? Not, not, see, the, the, this is, this is what I'm talking about. You know, he's explicitly repudiating that. And not the piece of the grave, in other words. In which ignorance too often abounds. Oh, why is it not? Enforced on the world by American weapons of war. Not the peace of the grave or the security of the slave. I am talking about genuine peace, the kind of peace that makes life on earth worth living, the kind that enables men and nations to grow and to hope and build a better life for their children. Not merely peace for Americans, but peace for all men and women. Not merely peace in our time, but peace in all time. But, and, and, you know, he goes through this. I've played these clips for you before, and, and I, I'm not going to play the whole set of them now, uh, this whole speech that John Kennedy gave at, at Michigan State University in 1963. But, but the, the essence of it was a repudiation of war and a repudiation of basically one-world globalism. And we've been moving in this direction of kind of one-world globalism, and the people that we have legislatively decided to put in charge of it are transnational corporations. That has been the essence of our trade deals. This dis d investor state dispute resolution, the ISDS uh, provisions that, that uh, Secretary Clinton has now come out and said she opposes in TPP that are there very much in NAFTA right now, our country, you and I, taxpayers, we are being sued for $15 billion by TransCanada, the company that was going to do the Keystone X line, XL pipeline that, that uh, the State Department and President Obama shut down. And it's not $15 billion in lost expenses. They're asking for $15 billion saying this would be the profit we would have made if you'd let us do this. And I think that the, that the uh, you know, broadly speaking, country after country after country, people are saying, okay, that peace through war thing that Adolf Hitler tried to do, that didn't work. That peace through violent repression that, that Joe Stalin tried to do in the old Soviet, that didn't work. That peace through international trade that we've been working on since, arguably since the Nixon administration, aggressively since the Reagan administration, that's not working. So how do we get peace in the world? And I would argue that, you know, if you want peace in the world, the way you get that is by being a good citizen of the world, by collaborating with other nations, by respecting the diversity and differences among all people all around the world, and, and empowering people within individual countries to have bottom-up, grassroots bottom-up democracy, small-d democracy. 
Now, that doesn't mean that we're going to go over to, in my opinion, that we should go over to Iraq and bomb it because Saddam Hussein is not a small-D Democrat. But it does mean that, that we can lead by example, which kind of leads me to, is Donald Trump an example? But that's a whole other thing, I guess. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Anyhow, what I'm seeing is not just a country in ferment and turmoil. I'm seeing an entire world in ferment and turmoil. And it could really turn out for the better.